Hey, welcome back to another video. My name is Timon and this is Slider Drift. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. If you've been here before, I really appreciate, actually I really appreciate everyone that's watching. In this video, I have four winches in the cockpit that are not self-tailing and I am not a fan. Um, so I want to replace those. I've got two new Harken two-speed self-tailing winches and two used Ballow uh, self-tailing winches. So I want to upgrade those. I also have a electric winch in the cockpit that's not self-tailing. I want to upgrade that. Um, it's going to cost like four to five grand, not 45, four to five grand to upgrade that. I don't have that for such a simple upgrade, so I've got a, uh, an idea how I can DIY the shit out of it and just do it for, I'm hoping, less than 200 bucks. Yeah, the idea in my head seems sound, but I'm not 100% convinced that it's going to work. I usually am convinced what I'm going to do is going to work, but not with this one. So if I get to the end of the video and I do do it or I don't do it, if you have a better way of going about it, please leave it in the comments because that is what this channel is all about basically. So yeah, let's get to it. Today we learn. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those four winches. Man, I'm excited about having new winches. Can't actually get it off. <laughs> Taking off a layer of paint. I'm gonna grab the other winches and what are the odds that the holes are gonna line up? Even two out of four would be real nice. Okay, I've got two of these Harkin two-speed 40s and two of these used Barlow um, 19, whatever that means. I'm not sure if uh, these two went through the flood with the rest of my stuff. They were up pretty high, I can't actually remember. This one does look remarkably shiny, so I'm thinking that these probably escaped, but this being used and who knows how old it is. Yeah, they might need a service, but what I'll do is install them first. So the whole pattern for this one and also the Barlow, they look like they've just got the bolts on the load side, for lack of a better word. Um, and they're definitely not gonna line up. My gosh, why don't they make them all the same? So this little inset piece, Barlow, Australia, they're obviously not being made anymore screws out these two little holes here must be for some tool to screw it in and screw it out look how gross it is up there this is the inside underneath the where the winches are I'm not, I guess that's mold, maybe, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to get that real good, all this real good lick with some, um, what's that oil? There's some oil that you spray on it, and like kills everything. Yeah, I always find if I've got the choice, I will put an Allen key style of nut there. Um, if it's through the deck, uh, regardless of if I've got more people on board or not, because I want to make everything easy for one person. I find if I've got an Allen key here on the top side of the deck, let's just simulate it here, and it normally has something to push up against when you're underneath with your spanner undoing it, it normally has something it can push up against and it normally comes off. So that's my little hot tip for people that are just by themselves. I use uh, Allen keys on the top side of the deck. I drilled the new holes for the winches, cleaned up the backing plates, and then filled the holes that I didn't need with thickened epoxy. There was no need for me to do the drill fill drill method with this epoxy because it's solid fiberglass is part of my boat. You can see these, all these little rust spots coming through here. All I'm using is metal polish brasso. And fun fact, cardboard is like about a thousand grit sandpaper. Shiny winch again. I'm gonna give these gaskets a go. 
Just made these, pretty simple. These are in two parts, because I don't want to buy any more rubber, but they're in between the bolts, so if there's any water through there, it can actually just run down. Hmm. It's the endless, endless, endless pursuit for a dryer boat. I'd really like to hear what everyone else is doing. Like, I hate butyl tape, or people using gaskets, like I'm trying out here, I've never done this before, I'll see if it works, I'll let you guys. Or what do you use? Leave it in the comments. Okay, one, two. Time to put all of these on from underneath. <laughs> now that these winches were in, it was time to move on to the electric winch and try and make it self-tailing. Hey Siri, where's my tape measure? It doesn't look like you have an app named tape measure. You can search for it. There's no way I can get this. It doesn't just like come out because of the actual motor. Not sure what I'm doing here. Again, <laughs> story of my life. I'm coming across the solo sailor's curse of needing two people. This thing, it's not gonna be good for those bolts to undo it while the weight's sort of pulling it down. Okay, I think that'll work. Using some leftover marine ply, I cut out some spaces and glued them together. I covered my spaces in epoxy and then used the chisel to chisel out a little section which is going to house the platform for my self-tailing thingamajigger. I then painted all my bits and used a bit of Sikaflex to secure them into place. So when I disassembled this and measured this little spacer here, I made sure that the bolts that were going through were gonna be long enough, cause now it's sort of raised. But I thought about it for this one, I made sure, but this one, I didn't. And they're not even remotely coming through, <laughs> which is annoying, which is very, very annoying. Um, <sighs> might be easier just to go buy some longer ones of these. Works. Now I've got these winches called winchers. What I want to do is put one across here. I've got to soak it for in hot soapy water for five minutes first. Apparently they're pretty difficult to get on. And then I'll go ahead with this little design that I've got to try and make it sort of really good self tailing. This is supposed to be self-tailing, but from what I've seen on the internet, it's not all that great in the self-tailing arena. So let's see if we can make that better. Hmm, that wasn't too bad actually. I expected much, much, much worse. Given this a bit of a polish, made it look a little bit better, that's great. Well, version one has not worked at all. Uh, I was thinking that pin is obviously a little bit small. I'm not sure why I didn't just get Guy to weld a pin straight on the top. I can't weld stainless steel and I don't have the amount of stainless steel to practice on. I've already put him out a little bit. Hopefully he does this for me as well though. Oh shit. This is turning into a project that I shouldn't have done. I was just cutting away from myself with this and the blade snapped. Went through my finger. Did the old hold it high above the head trick and um, some super glue. <laughs> For now, that seems to be working. Here's the culprit right there, if you can see him. Radio take two. Thank you, Guy, for welding this for me again. Um, yeah, should be a bit beefier this time. Maxwell 1200. Okay, so hindsight's 20, 20, 1200. I'm guessing that's 1200 watts, 12 volts, 100 amps. 
I've got two 48 volt to 12 volt converters to run my 12 volt system. Um, they're 20 amps each, so I've only got 40 amps total. I do have a buffer battery that I um, bought, I just haven't installed it yet. So I guess now's time to install it. I need more power. Okay, welcome to my underground lair. I am uh, in my cubby, AKA the garage, AKA the electronics hub. Let me show you what I've done. I ended up wiring the 12 volt battery and I'll just give you a rundown of exactly what I've done here. Long time viewers of my channel will know that I say this every time I'm in here, but this will get cleaned up later sometime. First I had to rewire the Servo GX. The Servo GX was wired into my 12 volt system and so I hooked it up into my 48 volt system. But when I hooked the Servo GX to the 48 volt battery bank, it blew up. And I got very, very, very sad. And I was just like, what, why, why, why is this happening? And then I looked up some stuff online and I found out that there was an actual product recall of the one I had, which made it slightly better. It did mean I had to go up to Brisbane, give the old one back and get my new one. So if you guys have a Servo GX, this is quite an old issue now. They reckon I must have had one of the last batch and it did happen. 10 months in so apparently the fault is when you hook it up to 48 volts they blow up <laughs> who would have thought and it works fine now so that's what i had to do so the servo gx is now on the 48 volt system and then i made this buffer battery here so what i've got here is these fray cells these fray cells are the same as the ones that i have installed in the boat for the electric motor and I also have an extra bunch of those that I'm going to use for the tender when that goes electric hopefully sometime this year. These cells are awesome if you guys have been watching for a while you know that the original ones went through a flood they were sitting in storage for over a year went through a flood underwater for five days and tested at 105 percent capacity so they're amazing. I've got four of those cells here and then you got to connect the cells up to the BMS the BNS basically connects to all four cells to balance them and it's also got a temperature probe in there and a Bluetooth dongle so I can monitor everything that's going on. Why I set up my lithium batteries like this is because the most likely component of a lithium battery is the BMS to die. My cells are super high quality. I can't see them dying anytime soon. And if you buy one off the shelf and it dies probably sooner than what it should, it's more than likely gonna be the BMS. And if you're game, you can cut them open and you just, if you end up cutting one open and it's lithium ion phosphate, you'll end up finding sort of something similar to this inside a case, obviously. Um, you got the BMS and then you got the four cells. But yeah, so I wanted to do it this way so I could have more control that if anything went down, I could replace the part that went down um, and died and not have to replace the whole battery. So that's why I've done it this way. I've just got a bit of wood here and the BMS is actually attached to the bit of wood. These fray batteries are also really good because the manufacturer makes these brackets here. So there is a um, threaded rod that goes all the way through all these brackets and holds them all together. And this actual case here, underneath here, I've got it bolted to bolted to this so it's not going to go anywhere and then just the stuff that i had lying around i've got a switch here so i can turn off the battery um, or disconnect it from the 12 volt system and, and that is wired into the 12 volt system another thing i've had to do is these orion 48 volt to 12 volt converters they're 20 amps each and they're adjustable so you can adjust the how much basically it's um, outputting so i've put that to 13 point two volts if i'm not mistaken if i am let's just put it up there 13.2 volts and that should keep this battery charged up at about 70 percent for lithium iron phosphate long-term storage 60 percent i think is the recommendation from the manufacturer and i've gone with 70 percent to get a little bit more out of them so this should give me for all those loads that need more than 40 amps this battery here should make up the difference and also if for some reason my 48 volt my 48 volt system was to go down this is 100 amps at 12 volts 
and it's at 70%. So I've got 70 amps at 12 volts. So if the 48 volt system was to go down for some reason, this battery would take up the slack and I've basically got 70 amps at 12 volts to figure out what's gone wrong. So that will run like the chart plotter and the depth and whatever else I've decided is a critical load until I can really sort out what is going on. Now I'll go show you what's going on with the winches. So first of all, these winches, the four winches, one, two, three, four that I installed there, working really good, really good. Yep, don't know any, anything else I can say about them. They're working really well and I'm glad that I upgraded. I do also have these uh, Easy C winch handles and they just work like normal winch handles and they can fold out and fold away. I have never, ever, ever, ever been a fan of normal winch handles. They're massive, they hit things, they can't really just sit in the winch full time. Even on the race boats that are going around the world at like Mach 10 speeds, they've all got little winch pockets to push the winch handles in, which they can easily fall out of, or you can you put it down, you forget, I don't know. It always has just seemed like a silly idea. So I've got these, I don't know how good they're gonna be so far, they're good, but I'll give you an update. And the self-tailing winch. I'm gotten as close as I'm willing to get. So what I had to do was, <laughs> I had to put some bearings on the bottom and these two bearings fit just nicely with the um, with the split pin that I can put in through this little hole at the bottom. And then I've also had to use two at the top. At the moment, I've just got this tiny little screw in here. It's not being held in there with anything at all to stop these two from going up because the rope wants to push these up a little bit as well. Yeah, so this is, I guess, called a thingamajigger and it works pretty good. It is going to get better. So in an upcoming video, there will be, I am planning on running as many ropes back to the cockpit so I can make it easier for single handing and so I don't have to go out onto deck as much. That will involve putting some deck organizers and redirect sort of things through here to lower all the friction. And I'll also have rope clutches through here. Once the rope clutches and the deck organizers are in, there should be little to no friction. So this little angle of deflection here that I've got in the rope, um, that'll take out that, and this will work even better after that. And there is one more reason why I actually even bothered to do this. One, because I just had the idea and, and it interests me. And two, is for an upcoming little secret project, that involves this. Stay tuned, getcha.